everyone, this is S.M. Pratt, and we finally reached the end of the Wizards of the Coast era with the set Sky Ridge. I know it's a long-awaited video for a lot of collectors, so hopefully I can deliver to that anticipation. But not only do I want to talk about the set Sky Ridge, I want to talk about the entire Wizards of the Coast era and what it's done for the hobby. So, starting with the data for Sky Ridge, the set was released in Japan 2002, Ang was 2003. It was another larger expansion set with 182 cards. And, of course, on the Japanese side, you had that split series just like you do today uh, for Sky Ridge's E4, E5, Split Earth, Mysterious Mountains and you know if you look at the Sun and Moon sets today it's very similar. In Japan there's usually two sets and then when it transitions to English it's incorporated into one large set. This was also true for Sky Ridge. So Sky Ridge had some similarities to Neo Destiny. I wouldn't paint it as a direct parallel but one of the parallels obviously was that this was the last of the E-Series era but also it packed the most crystal cards. Similar for Neo Destiny, you saw the most shining cards, and for Sky Ridge, you had the most crystal cards. You can see Crobat over there showing you all kinds of colors. But the most notorious card from this set is hands down the Crystal Charizard. This is definitely one of the top five Charizard cards in the hobby, and that's being very conservative. This is actually a favorite for a lot of people, uh, especially the younger, younger age group that didn't grow up with the base set or perhaps, you know, the earliest Watsi era. This was the Charizard card they knew. This was the Charizard card they looked for. And it's just iconic. I mean, it's, it's very unique because it is a crystal card. There aren't that many crystal species. Uh, and of course, Charizard just happens to be in every single, pretty much every single release where that Shining, Crystal, Gold Star, you name it, there's probably a Charizard in there. So... This is a must-have for Charizard collectors. One of the biggest aspects, you know, obviously you have solid artwork, iconic design. But one of the biggest aspects I touched on the other E-Series is the scarcity. Scarcity is that invisible element, you know, that's not visible on the card. You can't just say, oh, this card has X amount of copies printed. We'll never actually know that. We'll never know how many of each card was printed. We didn't have the luxury of the Alpha, Beta, early Magic releases to about 95, where they told you how much quantity existed. That's something we'll always have to speculate. But for the E-Series, it's pretty obvious that the scarcity is a big factor for every set. You know, if you get on eBay right now, it's very difficult to find anything Sky Ridge. You know, I, even for me, I'm in the market for a complete set. If you have one, let me know. So I'm in the market for a lot of the E-Series' complete set, even binder condition, EX Near Mint. It's not a thing. It's not consistently available. So that's one of the biggest factors I would throw at you for the Charizard. You know, everyone can look at the artwork. Everyone can see how nice it looks. But the scarcity element is something that is inherently attached to that card. It, it, in fact, a lot of these crystal cards, I have a Lugia right now, for example, PSA 8. I've already declined $300 offers on it because it's something that just has such limited quantity release you know that counterintuitive aspect of the e-series is that because it wasn't as popular you have that low quantity uh release and so you see that in something like the crystal charizard so for sky ridge for me again for this entire e-series i see it as just one i've talked about this before it's one large identity i just see expedition as the beginning and sky ridge as the end that journey if you will, we reach the top of the mountain for sky ridge and that's Really how I perceive all of this. You know, it's it's a group identity. And why I emphasize that is because this was not supposed to be the end of Wizards of the Coast. This was not conceptualized as the last set for Watsi. It just happened to be the last set for Watsi because they lost the rights to Nintendo during 2003, the early 2000s. I had to wear my early 2000s uh, shirt here. This, this was hot back then in 2002, 2003. So... This is why you have the just abrupt end. You know, there was supposed to be Jamboree, uh, Legendary Collection 2, these, these just mythic sets that if we saw one card from them, collectors would lose their minds. You know, they're just basically rumors, but they're rumors to solidify that aspect of the transition from Watsi to Nintendo. And why I really want to focus on this is because at the end of the day, it's really difficult to not value Watsi. You know, I don't care if you're 10 years younger than me or even younger than that and you didn't grow up with Watsi at all. There has to be an inherent value place in what Wizards of the Coast has done for modern trading card games. And you see that through Sky Ridge. You see that not only through this set, but if you look back all the way starting from the first edition base set until Sky Ridge, you see consistency, you see continuity, you see quality artwork, you see a purpose, okay? And that's lacking today in a lot of the modern sets. You see whether it's a first edition print, something like crystal cards, shining cards, you see something where there's some type of collector's consciousness or some type of value on the collector you, that's heavily present in Wizards of the Coast. And sure enough, 
The two most successful modern TCG games today, modern TCG brands, are what? Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. Who started those? Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> the proof's in the pudding. You know, I think it's something that is perhaps spoken about in general, but when you're specifically talking about you know, what Wizards of the Coast has done for the hobby, uh, it, it's best viewed, I think, not only through the E-Series, but through the entire era. You know, it's just a time capsule on, you know, on the collectibles of not only Pokemon, but Magic the Gathering. And when we're talking about time capsule, you know, getting back into Skyrim specifically, if you looked at Skyridge, you know, from 2007 or 2006 when I got back into the game, I saw Skyridge and I was like, oh, it's, you know, those cards were printed like three years ago. It's not a big deal, right? They're not that old. But today, the E-Series has developed an entirely new identity. And I really wanted to emphasize this point because I think E-Series still flies under the radar because it's considered new in a way. Because I think a lot of people see that old back design. You know, I just have an old Watsy card right here on hand. This old back design is considered old, vintage, retro, you know, you name it. Where the E-Series doesn't really capture that. The E-Series is kind of in limbo still to this day. Uh, I think, obviously, a lot of the series collectors who are really into Pokemon, they see Ear Series as the end of the Watsy era. But I think for a lot of people, that template, because it was somewhat echoed in Ruby Sapphire, you know, just with a silver design, therefore, it's kind of muddled, if that makes sense. But my prediction moving forward is that the E Series is just going to be a part of that entire Wizards of the Coast era. I think a lot of people are chasing down the entire Wizards of the Coast everything, uh, because I think it's just a nice, concise time capsule. It, it's very cut and dry. It's a good distinction and transition from, okay, Wizards of the Coast own it, now Nintendo own Pokemon. And you see a vast difference in not only print, uh, card type, card stock even in a lot of situations. So there's just a lot of differences there that makes it, you know, an easy separation if you're just trying to consolidate and collect an era. So... That is what I would give you for Sky Ridge. It's something that my perception has changed tremendously over the past decade. You know, when I first got back into the hobby, like I said, I was just like, okay, yeah, these cards were printed a few years ago. They're not that old. Where today, when I look at Sky Ridge, it's like, shit, I can't find a complete set anywhere. You know, I, I can't find these crystal cards like I could back in 2007. And I know we've heard all this for First Edition Base and all the uh, earlier Watsi sets, Neo Destiny, you name it. Um, but for, for the E-Series, it's something I slept on for the longest time. I remember one of my earliest posts, even back on the Poke, Poke Gym, when that was still up and running, I remember saying that my Achilles heel was always the E-Series, because I just slept on it. I was like, yeah, it's not that old, whatever. And here we are today, you know, we're talking 15 years later now, and, you know, the set has evolved into something else. You know, the E really stands for evolution. It's something that has truly evolved and has just changed my, not only my perception, but just changed the market availability uh, just change the concept of availability in general uh, because it, it's somewhat counterintuitive because you have the last e the last set so you would think naturally okay Sky Ridge is going to have more out there because it's the last set right where something like 1999 or 2000 there should be less of that but that's not the case you know there's more rocket and I would even say fossil and perhaps jungle available than there are the E series so again that is my takeaway here is the scarcity and the market availability for uh, the E series is just gone you know it's not something that's there it's very i would say it's almost analogous i don't want to say shadowless and first edition base because that's on its own pedestal um but it's closer to that than it is something like let's say you know team rocket or even fossil or gem or something like that i think there's more of those sets out there of course we we could do a hierarchy even within them but it to just really drive that point home Scarcity, when I think Sky Ridge, when I think E Series, I just think scarcity. Probably said 10 times in all these E Series videos combined. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's my takeaway for Sky Ridge. It's, it's the end of an era. Uh, it's, it's one of the most crucial time, just, I would say the most crucial aspect. So I'll talk about this in its own video when we get into the EX era, the original EX. The transition from Watson Nintendo is the most crucial point in Pokemon's history, period, unequivocally. Nothing comes close. That was the most crucial point. So this marks the, just the beginning of the most crucial time in the hobby, which we'll talk about when we talk about original EX. So that's my takeaway for Sky Ridge. Fantastic artwork. That's one other little thing I forgot to throw in there is that the art for the E series is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Again, like my bias is because of the border. You know, I, it makes it look off center to me. This talk about this before that like slim shady blonde, you know, bleach blonde hair. Got to throw in all the early 2000s references here. Uh, this thick border makes it look a little off-centered, but once you get past that, I mean, there's some of the best artwork in the E-Series. You know, even for people who aren't big into Pokemon, when they see some of the E-Series artwork, 
they're just like, man, this is phenomenal. Like, why, why don't you have more of this guy? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I slept on it. You know, this, this has always been my Achilles heel. So, so there you go. That's my, that's my perception. Uh, phenomenal artwork, extremely scarce and just completely captures that end of the Wizards of the Coast era. It was not a conceptual end. It was not a pointed end. This was just the end, uh, because they lost the rights to Nintendo. So if you are, Someone who values history, you value the history and artwork. Sky Ridge has it going on. Sky Ridge has that challenge for you. If anything, it's pretty much the counter. It's the opposite of what you see today, where you have a ton of print. I would even say these crystal cards are very similar to the hyper rares in a lot of in a lot of ways. They have that rainbow effect going on, uh, but the only difference is this is how hyper rares should be. You know, they they need to be more of a challenge, or they need to have some more. They need to have a division between first edition unlimited or some type of. Reverse Howl versus Howl. Just give some healthy challenge for collectors. E-Series has that. So, As usual, guys, let me know your thoughts if you have any questions. As usual, until next time.